Hello there, friends. How's it going? Welcome to Breakfast All Day. I am Christy. That is Alonzo. Up next for us, Alonzo finally saw Eternals. Hooray! Now he is what all the fuss is about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Disney Plus. Uh, and, and, and I've been saddled with a plot synopsis, so this, this is going to be fun. Uh, okay, so apparently there's like God, who's not actually God, but he's kind of God, and his name is Erishem, and he created the universe, and then he also created the Celestials to sort of like safeguard everything. And then he also created the Eternals, which the Celestials use to uh, to to uh, end the deviants because the deviants are always trying to um, eat new civilizations and the the cele the, the the eternals are there to uh, push back the deviants and allow new civilizations to form and flourish but they're really not allowed to interfere all that much with stuff they can't get them like super advanced technology but they do kind of help slowly nudge them along and so we see the eternals doing their thing in like ancient Babylon and, you know, uh, like India 500 BC um, and now cut to the modern day. And they, the, the band has been separated for a while, but now suddenly the deviants are back and they seem to be evolving and they've all got to get back together. And that includes uh, Icarus, who's kind of like Superman because he can fly and shoot stuff out of his eyes, <laughs> and uh, Cersei, who can turn inorganic material into other inorganic material, I think. Um, hmm. Kango's got fireballs, and there's a psychic one, and then there's the, the <laughs> deaf lady who runs real fast, and there's... Um, uh, uh, Angelina Jolie, who can make like a, a light sword and uh, a spear, uh, but she's uh, losing her grip because of memories of things that we'll find out later what they are. And then there's also um, Gilgamesh, who's super strong. He's a chef. And a chef, yes, also. <laughs> Um, and he then makes pies. And then there's Sprite, who acts like a teenage girl, even though she's 7,000 years old, and she can create image things. Um, and uh, and they're all work. They're all Eternals working under a Celestial played by uh, Salma Hayek. And then when they have to go and figure out why the the Deviants are back and can they stop them and who even are they and there's a lot happening in this movie. <laughs> See, this is the problem, right? So the idea so of much like happening a, in this movie, the idea of a Chloe Zhao Marvel movie was yeah. very interesting, right? Yes. Very sure. intriguing. How will she take her signature aesthetic style and apply it to, you know, the behemoth machinery that is the MCU. Right. And you see glimmers of it, right? Yeah. Like from the very beginning, it looks totally different. And as you say, it's so crammed. It is also, and I cannot stress this enough, two hours and 37 <laughs> minutes long. But you know it's what? so with, long. With seven, at least seven characters that we're being introduced right. to, plus That's an entire like new kind of philosophical bent to these movies that yeah. they don't usually have. That's kind of economy and storytelling that was only two hours and 40. Right. It is that long and yet it still feels like superficial and rushed. So there's just so much going on here. But when it slows down for a moment here or there yes. to let us appreciate like the sunset on the beach or like gathering thunderclouds across the South Dakota plains. Props to Chloe Zhao for always finding a way to get back to South Dakota, <laughs> no matter or, what the movie is. <laughs> or even just like, just some straight up character interaction, you know? Right. And, and uh, look, I, I, I uh, this movie definitely bites off more than it can chew, but I so admire what it's trying to yeah. bite off because like, you know, we, we were all talking about the, the whole thing with the, the new Spider-Man movie where there's this notion of like, rather than just vanquish villains can we reform them can we fix them can we can we take their antisocial impulses and channel them into something else and this movie really tries to bite into the idea of like what heroism is and who decides what grand you know gestures need to be made and who should sacrifice and what the greater good even is and I'm like, oh wow, the, they're they're having arguments yeah. about ideas in a superhero movie, which is unusual. And and I, I applaud that. But then at the same time, it's like this should have been like a 10 episode series yeah. on Disney Plus, because there's so damn much going on and so many people to keep track of, and like characters, like major characters that you barely get to know because there's just no time. And like at the hour mark or so, the whole thing just grinds to a halt for this massive information dump. 
Mm, yeah. And kinda. so there, there's that. Um, and then the whole big climactic showdown just feels like so much generic MCU, you know, cacophony. Um, I should mention, so Ben Davis shot this. He also shot um, Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel. So there are some moments and some images that are very beautiful and, and very different. And, and this movie is trying to be really different in a lot of ways in terms of like the very organic and effortless diversity on display here, both in terms of the ethnicities of the characters and also like Brian Tyree Henry has a partner and they have a son. They live, you know, in a, a quiet suburban life as a family. And then a um, male partner, we should say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, they're a, a gay couple living in like suburban Chicago, I want to say. And, and it's a, uh, characters have sex in this movie yes which we, we never see i mean like it's implied elsewhere that you know clearly tony stark and pepper Potts have done it and like right. clint's done it because he's got kids <laughs> but, but um, yeah like they get down in this movie i you know i i admire that i i, I the, yeah i i mean I, what, what what i'm torn with here is i think the movie that they're that they, they they clearly want to be making versus what they wound up with and even though what they wound up with is is flawed in a lot of ways i at least admire the, the reach you know and i think there are individual things in here that work really well i like the problem solving on display in terms of like figuring out what are we even going to do and should we do it? You know, I thought that was all really interesting. And the climactic battle, well, yeah, I mean, some of it is just a lot of like, you know, <laughs> at least, and I always give movies credit for this because so many movies get it wrong. There are characters who are spread out in a whole bunch of different places and you always know where everybody is in relation to everybody else and you know when in the battle we are. So at least like everything kind of flows in that way that you that's the movies really this is this is the thing where action movies drop the ball maybe more than mm -hmm. anywhere else. It's like and the wait, editing wait. of that. Yeah. yeah, the editing of that, like who's where and how is this person by that one? And right. you know, so yeah, I mean. I, I grant you everything that you think is wrong with this movie is wrong with this movie. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed watching it because I just at least liked the fact that she was trying so hard to, yeah. to bring something new and different. And, and look, if nothing else, if Marvel movies are constantly conditioning us to not only watch the movie we're watching, but to think about the next three movies we're going to be watching, I like the introduction of these characters and their fairly unique sort of dilemma regarding their role in the universe as part of the overall MCU. Mm -hmm. I think that could bring some interesting, you know, sort of challenges to otherwise straightforward narratives from other movies. I think we'll see. Yeah, no, as you say, there are so many of them that this is like an introduction to them. And so some, some elements of their personalities, like Angelina Jolie's character is clearly suffering from some mental illness, which the film handles very sensitively, yeah. right? That's an interesting idea, but then they have to hop off to the next thing. Lauren Ridloff's character, who's, who's hearing impaired and like, that's her superpower. Like, that's interesting, you know? And it's, it's, it's a means of inclusivity that doesn't feel forced. And like, and yet that's just one tiny little piece in a giant puzzle of stuff going right. on here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I appreciate her efforts to like, bend the MCU to her will. You know, she came <laughs> fresh off of her Academy Award wins for Nomadland and um, you know, for picture and director when this came out. And yeah. um, I appreciate that you know, she's trying to do something different from the indies that she's known for, but she can only do so much. You know, it's still, it's still a giant behemoth corporation, as you say, with multiple movies in its plans. Having said that, you gotta stay for the credits. Oh yeah. All of the credits. Well, there's like two, right? There's like a mid yeah. one, and then there's like one at the end. At the that... very end, yeah, yeah. And look, you know, like Disney Plus makes it very easy because they have a skip credits function, and you know that that until the thing shrinks down and they try and send you to the next thing, that you have to keep watching. Mm. Like during Boba Fett, if something's going to come up in the closing credits, like it's not going to do the boop. Maybe you should also watch whatever this other. Was thing there a credit doing. scene in Boba Fett today? No, 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 no there was not. Oh, thank but God! Saying, but there have there have <laughs> been okay in the in the last Hawkeye, for instance, mm. you knew to stick around because it didn't do that shrink thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just saying. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm saying five point two. All right, I said seven point two uh, because I I think that in the context of MCU movies. They're, they're trying for something interesting here. I think that what 
what does get accomplished here will reverberate in interesting ways to other movies. And I'm glad I saw this. I enjoyed myself while I was watching it. I could just feel it being too much for one movie to, 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 to encompass. Indeed. So um, Nick and I did a Marvel Monday episode about this when it first came out. So if you listen to our podcast, there's an episode from back in November when we talked about it as well. Um, I don't think that he loved this either. It's sort of clunky in the way it goes back and forth in time and all that. But anyway, it's done. Thank you for watching it, Alonzo. I appreciate you. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to see it. I just didn't want to go to the theater. So I'm, I'm glad that I finally had the opportunity. And let's face it, aren't we all looking forward to the day that Angelina Jolie has to share the screen with a talking raccoon? <laughs> Oh, it's coming. Fingers crossed. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out at BeFast all day on social media. And uh, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast all day. We are discussing the aforementioned The Book of Boba Fett there right now with lots of other cool TV stuff coming up. You get videos like this with no commercial interruption and our monthly off the menu segment. This time you're getting a double order. Um, this week we're talking about uh, what What's up, Doc, in honor of the late Peter Bogdanovich, which our subscribers voted on. Next week, uh, we're currently now taking votes uh, to talk about one of six uh, films featuring or directed by the uh, late great Sidney Poitier. So get in on that action to vote, to watch. You got to be a member. Patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.